Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road. And that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Well, it's over the ball. Hello everyone and welcome along to our latest episode of the RTE GAA podcast. It is finally upon us. We have waited so long for the Hurling Championship to start and we are going to look ahead to it all. Joining myself and Rory today is Maliki Clerken and Shane McGrath. And Shane, it really does feel like Christmas Day for Hurling fans. We've waited so long and here is Hurling to save us all. Yeah, that's it, yeah. You know, and um, the Leinster Hurling Championship is on as well, Jackie. You know, we have to mention that. So, <laughs> again, don't, don't take it too serious, Leinster Hurling people, all right? Okay, it's... Uh, I think, I, look, the Leinster Hurling Championship, will, it has one big game. Wexford Dublin will be, I think, will be the, you know, unofficial third place playoff. I think that's what it probably will be. And then next week, uh, it'll really get going then when, when Galway play to Kenny. But I suppose the Munster is what it is. And every week, there's just, there's going to be, there's going to be two humdingers every week. And... I just don't think Jackie could start any better than Limerick and Clare down in Ennis. You know, even if it was on in the Gaelic grounds, you know, it's it's a bigger stadium. Yeah, the atmosphere is unreal, but there's just something about Ennis. It's just so everything's so intense. Everybody's on top of each other. They, there's going to be more people than has Ennis has seen. Where in a long, did they long find time. the extra two thousand seats? I think they, I think to... they were able to take down the wire or something, weren't they? Yeah. It has something to do with it, and I just think. You know, I like we haven't heard too much about Limerick in a while. It's, it's funny, a funny story. I suppose the last thing I heard about Limerick was my brother was actually out in uh, Portugal there a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> he was walking down with his wife down for dinner, and he wasn't excited about being away with his wife on holidays or you know maybe getting a bit of sun. He was just excited <laughs> that he was after meeting five or six of the Limerick hurlers walking up against him. So, and like you know, they were one of the few teams that were away on training camps. You know, and you know even Tip, Tip, Tip gone away there for a few days as well. So look, I just think it's. It's just so well set up. Walsh Park will be brilliant, Jackie, you know, with Watford and Cork and what's on the line there as well. Maybe some, maybe some, maybe managerial careers, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that's been told, to be totally honest. But like, I just think Limerick and Clare, Clare coming in as a farm team, league champions. Limerick, haven't heard a lot about them. I've seen them a few times during the league. I say the most, we most of their kind of top team you would have seen, like the top 15, 16 guys, it probably was maybe even against maybe Galway, like, you know, it, it, even, even against Kilkenny, we didn't see that many. So you never got to see them at full tilt. They've been very, very quiet. And I'd say when they went away in the training camp, Jackie, I'd say, you know, they would have, you know, they would have had to ask each other some hard questions as regards to, you know, why, why did it happen against Kilkenny? John Kyle was very, you know, he was very outspoken or very honest when he's interviews and he said, worst performance in, on, under his tenure like and that's a big statement to make like you know I, I was down at it. it it was a kind of a real strange limited performance but you have to be credit to Kenny they absolutely you know they were miles the better team their intensity they brought to it Limerick just couldn't match it and kill Kenny you know deserve the winners so just think Limerick are coming in Jackie and like realistically John Kiley what a headache like you know everyone's back I think they're I think they're a stronger panel this year with Sean Finn and Decky Hannon being back if that's that's a no-brainer, like you say, I obviously. But I just think where Cahal O'Neill, Adam English, Donico Dolly, where they've gone in the last year, that they John Kiley can actually like, you know, let's be honest, like maybe last year he would have seen them look, these boys will do something for me, but I I won't be starting. And I think now John Kiley's looking at those three boys to say, I I'm actually I'm actually gonna consider starting one, maybe two of these guys. Who's going to lose out? I don't know. I mean, Cahill O'Neill, for me, maybe behind David Fitzgerald, lads, was probably the player of the league. Yeah. Uh, it, coming in at half back. Who's going to lose out? David Burns, Dickie Hannon, Kyle Hayes, Harry to know. Like, Sean Finn is coming back in now. He's going to want to get his spot back. And then up the field, Adam English is a real option as a forward, as a third midfielder. And Dunico Dalek, we see the way he lit it up as well during the league. So I just feel with all those things, they're a stronger panel going down to play Clare, the farm team, the country. Again, Walsh Park will be good, but I just think Limerick and Clare is, is just set for to be a home digger. Do you know, with all that in mind, though, Shane is right, Malachi, you know, Limerick still feel like they're under the radar. Like, I cannot remember a time when a team going for five in a row had this little talk about it. Like, you think back to Kilkenny when the Dubs were doing it in football. Just, like, for all the things that John Kiley has going on, it still feels like there's nobody talking about them. Mm. Well, it's been done, is, yeah. Isn't that a... Isn't that a function of nobody talks about hurling until this weekend every year? Yeah, maybe. Really? You know, 
you can you can think of a five in a row hunting team that uh, had this little talk about it, but you can think of a four in a row hunting team that had this little talk about it because we said exactly the same this day last year, you know, um, because the hurling league has been so sort of denuded, just reduced in circumstances over the past five years. Um, the hurling championship, the hurling year essentially starts now as in the time when people really talk about hurling starts now, you know, the time, you know, there, there isn't an equivalent of the dairy footballers in hurling as in a team that has been building a team that looks to have, you know, has changed what they are. A team that's coming to win the all Ireland from, from left field. The closest hurling has to that is Clare, but you know, Okay, Clare won the league, but Clare have been building over the past four or five years. Everybody can see that if somebody's going to sort of sneak up on the inside rail, probably going to be them. Um, but there's nothing new. There's no surprises in Clare. Um, and we won't know really what they bring until until Sunday. So I I think. I think partly that is a it is a function of the fact that we just don't talk about hurling until this in in any real context until now because um because nobody can really believe what they've seen in the early months of the year uh, they, or nobody treats it that that seriously in the early months of the year um and so everybody like this is all this this is always nearly the best hurling week of the year yeah um because we can still give all five counties in munster a chance um we we still kind of we still see the munster championship as this completely sort of unimpeachable sporting competition because even though one team uh, has won five in a row <laughs> we still think that it's a very open competition um so it's a, this is always the best week of the year because we think that everybody has a chance. We think even Waterford have a brutal Monster Championship group record. We still think they have a chance. Uh, we're still not counting them out. Um, Tip finished the league, getting a hiding off Clare in the league semi final. Uh, we still think they have a chance. Uh, we still think Cork could do something. Maybe they're, they're I think they're most people's pick for the third team to go through. We'll, we'll see how that works out. But you like not having a hope, not a hope. <laughs> but you wouldn't be saying it with any confidence. And look, Claire and Claire and Limerick are, are probably a lot of people's idea of of the best two teams uh, mm. in the country. So, um, yeah, there isn't a lot of talk about Limerick. But the other side of that, of course, is that like, what is there to talk about? Like it, the difference between I I I find them fascinating in that we don't have to go back far to see a team going for five all irons in a row uh, because we had the Dublin footballers. Um, and yet this Limerick, the way Limerick have done it is quite different to the Dublin footballers. Like Jim Gavin made a, a thing every year of adding a fresh face, one or two, like it was, if it wasn't Con O'Callaghan, it was Owen Merchant or it was Niall Scully. And every year, Ryan Howard, there was a new player every year. Limerick have done it with a pretty much the same mm. 15 to 18 to 19 players all the way through. And last year, I know uh, all the way through last year, I was trying to pick holes in them on the basis that, you know, when you watch enough sport, you realize that teams don't go on forever and and you have to, and some an empire will crumble somewhere along the way. And they lost Sean Finn and they lost Declan Hannan and they still... They still walk the All Ireland final with the with their best, probably their best half of hurling in the whole Kylie era, you know. So, I I think that's partly a reason why there's not a lot, an awful lot of talk about them because, what are we to be surprised by with Limerick anymore? You know, they are they are what they are. They will bring what they bring, and it's up to everybody else to catch them. The, the only question, Rory, is is the landscape different because they haven't done it the same way that they've done every year? They haven't won the league now. There is another team to talk about and Malachy is right maybe Clare are not akin to Derry but they're definitely a new challenge and I think they're very they're real contenders now so how different is the landscape now that they also have silverware in their pocket their journey though Jackie the landscape I don't think changes all that much from a Limerick perspective like their journey if you look at it 
it kind of contains every subplot and story that you would ask for. Like if you go back to two years ago, for instance, in the league, I think if memory serves, they only won one match, which was against Offaly. They got beaten in all their round robin games in the league and they still went out and won the All-Ireland. This year, they seem to have taken the league a little bit more serious. Or last year, that was two years ago, sorry. Last year, they took the league a little bit more seriously, won the league, went out and won the All-Ireland. This year, you know, I think they had kind of a stop-start nature to their campaign and then obviously came unstuck against Kilkenny. I don't know, again, to go back to Malachy's point, I think it's a really fair one, how much store or credence you can put on anything that you read into the league because Limerick are still capable of going down to Ennis and pulling out a big performance on Sunday coming and potentially winning the game. That's how good they've been and that's why they're such an iconic team. They're certainly... I think it's a very real argument if they win five in a row that they are the greatest hurling team of all time and that's that, that'll put that one to bed. But their greatest challenge is going to come in Munster and if you go back to last year's campaign in Munster, you know, they didn't play that well against Waterford the first day. Still managed to get over the line by four in the end with uh, a man sent off. Um, Drew would t- lost to Clare the next day. Drew would tip the third day out and only beat Cork by a point. Mm-hmm. So this is like, to, to go back again to Maliki's point, which is a very good one too, in that we... You know, this competition, which is, and I keep saying it, it is the greatest competition the GA has, including the All-Ireland series in both. There is nothing like it in terms of the fan, the fanfare, the colour, the, the the people that come through, the turnstiles, the everything about the Munster Hurling Championship. And the great thing about it is, and I think it's the best thing that's ever happened, is when it went from a five-game series to an 11-game series, because what they effectively did was they basically opened the tap and gave us more of it. It's been an absolute rip-roaring success from the GA's perspective, and certainly for the Munster Council, who are making it rain in a different way. And I'm sure like, if they could, they could probably sell this game on Sunday coming twice over. No problem, I would imagine. So... I think to go back to it, look, I think their greatest challenge from Limerick's perspective is going to come again in Munster. The Munster teams are going to line them up. They are going to, this is going to be proper combat and proper old school Munster Hurling Championship. People are probably getting a bit fed up of them now at this stage and they are going to find, but they'll meet that challenge. That's just the nature of, that's why they are an incredible side. I I think it's been a privilege in many ways to see a team he, like we're very quick to forget they went nearly half a century uh-huh. Jackie without winning in All-Ireland 50 years think about that like or whoever was it 45 years yeah. like it's unbelievable where they've come to and they're one of the great success stories in a hurling context over the last 140 years of the game since it's been organised so we should cherish and enjoy them while we have them that doesn't mean we don't want to see them beaten on Sunday, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trust me, I have a Limerick husband at home who constantly reminds me of all the years we had to wait for this. But yeah, I think that's funny, exactly. Shane, because the thing is, the, the immediate moment in which a team starts winning, everybody wants them to start losing. You know, and it doesn't matter if it's Limerick and we're all celebrating this and we all think they're fantastic. We're all still looking at the shiny new thing in Clare and saying, oh, wouldn't that be a lovely novelty too? Because we're sporting people. That's what we want, you know. Oh, come here, look, uh, I don't know if it ever happened before for to, for us even trying, when we were trying to stop Kenny, like, and like, people from everywhere, like people from Cork were even nearly hoping we were winning, people from Limerick yeah. and Clare were hoping <laughs> that, we were That's how bad it got. That's, that, that's how bad it got. They were like, does anyone but them, like, please, uh, like, you know, and then when we would have been, they were like, right, that's it, we hate, you know, again, yeah. don't want to <laughs> Back so, to the norm. I, yeah. I just think that's, that, that's the way it is. I think, you know, as from a sporting point of view, you just want to see the team with the most success. You just want to see something different. Mm. And it's no different with, 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 with the Hurling and Limerick. Like, I mean, of course, I, I agree with everything Rory said. I think they're a phenomenal, phenomenal group of people, like, you know, a phenomenal group. But, you know, I, I think Clare are coming into it in a great place. I, I read great quote during the week that it, it, every team or every sporting group, they need piano movers and piano players. And um, I just think that in the form, in the form of Tony Kelly, you have the greatest piano player Claire have ever seen, yeah. ever like. And I know yeah. some of the, the the diehard 95, 97 team fans might disagree and say maybe maybe it's Shawnee Mack or someone like that. But for me, it's Tony Kelly. Oh, like, yeah. and I think most Claire people agree with that. What I'm trying to say here is that some of the piano movers now became piano players 
because um, because Tony wasn't there. And, and and that happens in all sports. You know, you we're all sports enthusiasts here, but sometimes when 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 the great steps away, the the lessers or you know the people who don't get a lot of the line life, they just feel they get this freedom almost that I, I can actually go on and do this now. And I think Claire have actually become a stronger panel in the absence of Tony Kelly. Um, and that's, I think it's because Mark Rogers now feels more freedom. Aidan McCarthy feels more freedom. And when Tony comes back, he'll probably feel more freedom because have no doubt about it. When he's back and when he's right, he's playing. That's, 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 a, that's a no-brainer. But the rest of them now have all stepped up to a level that they can really, really help him. We've seen glimpses of it last year with regards to his scoring averages. He was scoring 50, 50, 55 percent of the scores on his own a couple of years ago, and um, for Clare, you know, even take that one score where he, he, cut, he cut the ball over the bar to take the monster final into extra time. Last year it was less, and I think this year it will be less, and I think that's only good for Clare as a whole. So while we're talking about Limerick and they are brilliant, I think Clare are, are are a better group this year to play them. I think tactically they like to go toe to toe with them, and um, so. Like we won't, we probably won't see any like kind of sweeper system in play. It's it's worked for them. They they they, they know they have the men to go toe to toe them. So there's, if there's one battle line looking forward to, it's it's definitely Connor Cleary and Aaron, Aaron Galan because when that ball comes in between the two of them on and off the ball, I, I just think they should just get a full camera to themselves. They really do like to say, if you want to lo- learn about movement, watch Aaron Galan. If you want to mm-hmm. learn about physicality, what, what you need to do to stop his space, watch Connor Cleary. I think that would be brilliant. You know, all obviously when the teams come out, the matchups will be unreal as well. But I just think to go back, what I'm trying to say is, I think Clare are in a better place, Jack. I, mm-hmm. I I really do. I think they're even beating Kilkenny and getting that monkey off their back because Kilkenny have had their number the last few years in the big games. I think that's a big thing. Brian Lowe now has a cup on the table. I think they really needed it as a group, as they're they're a serious group. And I just think it's 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 Medford. I I also another thing, lads, before we move on, I just think that the Munster Championship as well, managerial wise, right? This year is kind of the first year in a few years that every manager has had time to bet in with their group. So if you take, like, say, Pat Ryan now, had last year and had learnings from him, okay? And his big learning, he even came out during the week. Or, he said uh, you made a mistake, week, yeah. Said, I made a mistake. Yeah. We overtrained him. So, but when you're a manager, Rory, like on Jackie and Maliki, when you're a manager of a group, what works for one group might work for another group. Maybe yeah. that worked for Pat before with a different group. Maybe he just had to train the life out of him or get them so up for it. But that didn't work, obviously, with Cork. So that's a learning for him. Davey was with the Watford lad last year. Like, he, he would have learned as well. Because, as I said, you, you just need time to bet in with a group. And I think having those, all those managers now knowing exactly what worked and didn't work last year around Robin is a massive thing. John Kiley would have had the experience. Ryan Lowen would have had it. But now Liam Cahill really does have it. Davey has it. And Pat Ryan has it. So I think that, that's another factor as well in the Munster Championship being, you know, is, is going to be really close, really intense. Because, Every manager now knows what will work best for their group coming into the games. Kind of makes it do or die for all of them, though, Maliki, in that way. Yeah. You know, if you if you think for Pat Ryan, let's say, yes, he has that extra year. But if he doesn't get out of Munster this year, then it doesn't matter because I don't know if he'll be given the leeway to say, OK, we're going to give you another year of not getting out of Munster, even as competitive as it is. Yeah, yeah. like And, and the same for, I'd say, it's funny, we're, we're doing a thing for the paper on Saturday. Uh, and one of the questions we were asking is which manager is under the most pressure? And like you could make arguments for absolutely every yeah. one of them, even from like who's under more pressure than the guy going for five in a row? Uh, like so from John Kiley down, if you go down through Henry Shefflin, you go down through ev- absolutely everybody is under pressure, you know, uh, and down as far as like go to Davy Fitz, like. Waterford are completely obsessed now with like they're not talking all Ireland's, they're not talking anything, they're not talking even winning Monster. They're talking about Jesus Christ winning more than one bloody game in the Monster Championship. That's not so, tip. Yeah, that's not <laughs> tip. You know, like John Fogarty at that great table during the week where you know in this like Waterford have played sixteen games, won two and drawn one in the whole Monster Championship group stage era, and all those the the two wins in the draw were against tip. So. Um. Yeah. Like even you go back to Cork. You you asked me about Pat Ryan. The same. Like the the pressure is there. I think he knows. You know, he knows what he has. He knows what he doesn't have. Um. I would imagine that when he came into the job, he would have hoped that by now he wasn't relying on Seamus Harnady, Conor Lehan, and 
Pat Horgan to be starting Monster Championship games. Uh, I think he probably would have hoped that 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 somewhere along the way, um, new players had come through and displaced them. But that, but I think that's probably going to be the way it is. Um, I think they have a far they like they have a, a, a very set, really set team. You know, um, a set defense, which is good. Um, but they're like. It's a, it is a really like a really important year for them because exactly as you say, Jackie, like, and that's what makes Monster so great. Like there it the, the lines between success and failure are so well delineated. <laughs> like you either make the top three or you don't. Yeah. Um and like last year, the margins were incredibly thin between making it and not making it. Um so yeah, they they have to get through. Mm. The knife edge for them last year, Rory. Do you even remember going back to that where it was a point between them and Limerick and yeah. Cork win that game and the All Ireland champions are out and suddenly Cork's reflections are totally different. And I think for Pat Ryan, he's got to be looking at that. And, and Maliki's right. He's looking at they've won three of the last under twenties. They've had massive underage success coming through. He has found a couple, and I think I mean maybe this might be a, a Cork person's view on it, but I actually think there's an awful lot to be optimistic about. And I think for Cork, if they do get through Munster, then it is another step forward with this group. And I think he'll be given an awful lot of time to work with this team. And that's how fine it is. You can either find yourself, as Maliki says, a man under serious pressure, or the man at the wheel who's doing all the right things with this really talented group of players. Yeah, like, look, I, I think everybody in Cork was delighted that Pat took the job in the first instance and I think he'd be fine. Like, the, the issue for him is, look, it's just such a bear pit and you there's no guarantees and they will have their massive work cut out on Sunday coming. Like, people are talking silly stuff there in terms of scores and margins and all of that. I wouldn't buy any of it. I think Waterford will come out. This will this will, this is going to be another proper championship match. I'd, I'd have every, every confidence in that. I think from... Internally, management-wise, the Cork public, I think there was maybe an expectation that the uh, under-20 success, under-21 success over the last number of years, we'd have started to see a few more of those players maybe come through. But look, the reality is it takes a while. Like, if you look at the body shape, if you look at the conditioning that's required to play senior inter-county hurling now... You know, like graduating a lad at 19, it, it's very, very rare that these mm. guys will make that step up in year one or year two, unless there's some sort of freakish um, physiological specimen, yeah. which, which of course, Ben O'Connor was. But of course, mm. we, we, we don't have him and he would have absolutely like if Ben O'Connor, for instance, had stuck with hurling, Ben O'Connor would be playing on Sunday. No, absolutely no doubt in my mind. But... And um, look, that's that's just the nature of it. I think I would have. I'm a bit disappointed we didn't see Ben Cunningham during the league campaign. I think he was obviously he's an unbelievable free taker. I think he's carrying a bit of an injury. Um, I don't know whether whether or not he would have been somebody that might have featured had he had an opportunity. Um, but like the reality is, you're still going back to. I mean, the starting three forwards potentially on Sunday could be three lads that played in the 2013 All Ireland yeah. final. Yeah. Which is Will Patrick Hogg. Will make it, Rory? No, no, he's oh. not going to, no, he's gone. And there's a rumour now that Lehan potentially uh, picked up a bit of a hammer as well. That was the hilarious thing, by the way, that Cork played Galway in a challenge match below in um, some place called the the, the four something or other. It's, it's, it's in Limerick anyway. The game was in Limerick and apparently it was inverted commas behind closed doors. Apparently there was about 3,000 Limerick people at the match <laughs> because the word went around <laughs> that Cork and Galway were playing. So like the fact that it was uh, uh, behind closed doors just became a bit of a joke. The Mark Coleman potentially could be fit uh, whether or not he'd be good enough to start again there was a serious enough injury he picked up and Robbie O'Flynn whether or not he might be fit to start I think the word is that he'll definitely make the bench at the, at the bare minimum but you like uh, do you know what wouldn't surprise me Jackie what wouldn't surprise me in one bit and come Sunday coming is we get to Monday morning and we're none the wiser and you could actually see a draw in Ennis and a draw in Walsh Park. I basically, the one team that's sitting pretty in that scenario is Tipperary with a game in hand. Well, there's the question. Because Shane, you're sitting there very quietly. And I do think of all the teams that we talk about in Munster, Tipperary are the one that we talk about least. So where are they? What are you seeing? And what chance do you give them of getting out? 
I think physically in the world right now, I think they're in Portugal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I understand it. Um, so I, I don't know, Jackie. I'll be honest with you. Like, as a lot of Chief Hurling people who would know their stuff would say, I, I still don't think we know where, where, where we're at. Like, I think um, the league was up and down, but I just think what, what, what happened in Port Leash that day, you know, regardless of missing the freeze, you know, I, I, I think there's 18 wides, 10 or 11 of them were from freeze. I don't think that's that's the thing. I just think we looked we looked miles off it against Clare. We really did. Like uh, physically, we looked miles off it. You know, hurling wise, we 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 just it just wasn't a good day for us. So I'd be totally honest. I honestly don't know where Tipper at. And um, I'd still be friendly with a few of the boys, but I'd never ever ask them. As 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 people on these things always say, and I think that's that's just from being involved yourself. You you just don't want to talk about it really, especially with the likes of me. Like if I'm in the media and stuff, so. I, the last thing I'll talk about the few lads I'd be friendly with still in there it would be the hurling. I might talk, go play a bit, go play a bit of golf, or might have a chat about other things. You know, uh, you know how their families are doing and stuff. But I honestly don't know where, where we're at, and that's based on what's happening on the field. You know how things are going in training. They're obviously training hard, like everyone else. But I suppose if there's learnings for them and for Liam Cahill, that it probably will be. They just we just it needs to be that freshness. Like I just think. You know, you could see, everyone could see it like it was very, very stale towards the end of the round robin last year. Terrible performance against Waterford and got over Offaly because Offaly, you know, Offaly are their second tier team. And like, let's be honest, they were missing two, three, four of their guys were injured. A lot of them were in a headspace after losing a national final that just didn't, you know, it didn't go hand in hand with trying to get up for a championship game, a knockout championship game. And then against Galway, you know, we just, we... Could have got over the line, but again, even that evening, being there watching them, the lads just didn't look that normal, their normal bouncy self, like for for a knockout championship game, Jackie. So look, if there's any learning from last year for Tip, it's it's freshness is key. And the other side of it is like, what's our team going to be? I I don't know. I don't know mm-hmm. who our centre back will be. I don't know who our midfielders will be. I goalkeeper. Don't know. Goalkeeper is a fifty fifty. Could be Reece Shelley. Could be Barry Hogan. You know what I mean? And I think. That's that's hopefully what they're after finding out over the last couple of weeks, what the spine is building around it. Also, for people who might know, Shamey Kendi is a huge loss. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Massive, massive. What yeah, Shamey yeah. Kendi does in, in the dressing room, now, Shamey was only coming on board and I was finishing up, but I, I would have brought him to training and stuff. Such a level-headed guy, mature beyond his years, does his talking on the field, but when he speaks, Jackie, like, like, any, like any person we've been involved in sport, when he speaks, everyone listens. Mm-hmm. And that, like very few lads have that in the dressing room. Owen Kelly had it with when I was there. Audie would have had it, you know. Um, if Shamey was saying something, wouldn't say too much. But Shamey Kendi, Sh- Shamey Callan. But when Shamey Kendi speaks, everyone listens. His best performances for Tip are in the uh, were at the highest, highest pressure. I'm talking about All Ireland finals, popping up from wing back with scores from play. And for a guy from Clamell to be doing that, that was mm-hmm. that's relatively unheard of. But he's, you know, so he's a massive, massive loss. Can we replace him? Very, very hard, very hard. So. Look, I'm not playing the form out to kind of carry carry thing here, like, but I'm just kind of saying I just don't know where Tip are at. And I don't think Tip will know where they're at until until maybe 60, 63 minutes into the Limerick game inside the Gale Crowns. And I think we I think they'll know, I think we'll all know where they're where they're at being, Jackie, to be, just to be yeah. totally honest with you. Well, you've done a good job of doing the Euros anyway for your county, <laughs> if that's what you were, if that's what the attempt was. Well, yeah. let's finish off on Munster then with your who do you think is going to get out? So give me your tree then, Maliki. Who's coming out for you? I think until Limerick don't do it, you, you, you have to say Limerick. Uh, and if you're going on the team that's been closest to them and the team that has been the best in the Munster round robins over the years statistically, you've got to go with Clare. Um, and then after that, you know, uh, you're tossing a coin like Waterford should be better. Um, Davy is a lot of uh, the injured players that missed the league uh, are generally all back. I think Caleb Lyons probably won't make it back, but I think most of the rest of them are, are more or less back. Um, so they should be better. Um, but I probably side with Cork just for pig iron. Um, I, I, I was very worried about Tipperary after that league semi-final. I know it's only a league semi-final. I know we can't, I can't on the one hand say that the league is just completely uh, not indicative of anything, but like 
once you get to a semi-final stage and the the fat is in the fire, you sort of see what people are made of a little bit. And Jesus, they were really they they they, they seemed very short of leaders to me that day. Um, so look, they would be better for championship. Obviously, uh, it was a very bad. Port Leash, like it's not really, it's about as far from the Munster Championship as you can get. But so they they should be better. But I think I'll just side with Cork as the third team. All right, Rory, who's your picks? No, I wouldn't differentiate on that. I think the run of fixtures and um, the way your fixtures fall are uh, is actually quite a significant thing. I think from Cork's perspective, having Clare and Limerick at home is is a help it's not no it's no gimme I'm sure like they won't be quaking in their boots about coming down to Parky Cueve but it is a help I mean I think the Limerick game is sold out if not I think there's only a few terrace tickets left and I'd say Clare won't be far off that as well um, and you're away to Watford big crowd heading down there as well big car crowd and then your other away match is Thurless which as we all know isn't exactly um, you know that that's not a, that's a place that Cork people are quite happy to go to so I think Will you get four? I think four points, generally speaking, is what gets you through. So it has been certainly in the past. And I think um, in, from that point of view, I think with the way the fixtures have fallen, the breaks and the, and the, and and just the pressure. And I also, I think the big thing, uh, Claire and Limerick, I think, will absolutely get out. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the All-Ireland final. But in terms of the third team, I think given the harrowing nature that Cork experienced on their exit last year surely must be something in terms of a can of bitterness to open up for Pat to start to reawaken, lads. Do you do we all remember how we felt on the 26th of May last year when the season was over? So you'd imagine that that would be that extra little bit of spite to drive them on to make sure that they get out of Munster this time. Along with, Claire and Lim- along with Claire and Limerick, sorry. Well, all right, well, two votes for Cork then. Shane, go on, give us a third vote for Cork there and we'll all be laughing, yeah? Limerick clarity. <laughs> <laughs> sure. so you couldn't say anything different, uh, could you? Well, it, look, come here. It's excuses or success. You can't have both. It's that time of year now. So everybody, every, every, every manager will have the full tilt that they can possibly have. Obviously, one or two might be missing. But look, it's excuses or success. So I go with Limerick clarity. All right. Good man. You're doing your bit today. That is for sure. Uh, All right. Let's round off on the Leinster Championship then, because Shane, you said it at the top there. This works for Dublin game feels like the the crunch weekend for everybody. And I know it's the opening day of the season, but this to me is season defining for Wexford or Dublin in in deciding who's going to get out of there. We presume it's going to be Galway and Kilkenny, just the way the nature of this has been. This is so, so crucial. Uh, it's an unofficial third place playoff, Jackie. And whether Wexford or Dublin people like to hear that or not, that's what it is like. You know, Limerick and sorry, Limerick was still Limerick really with the Leinster now as well. Geez, but, um, <laughs> Galway, Galway, and Kilkenny are, are are going to get out. Are they going to be in the Leinster final? They probably will. Yeah, not much has changed in a long time there. Like Dublin and Wexford, massive, massive game. Like who do I feel is in a better place? I think we all feel Wexford are in a better place. I think Dublin. I watched them a couple of times in the league. They just looked like. They're so uncomfortable when they're playing against the top teams. Um, Wexford, they're not quite a top team, but you know what? Under Keith Roster now, you know, he's done great work with them. And I mean, I believe that he'll have a lot of, he'll be able to call on a lot of his top guys as well. And so I'm sure the last couple of weeks of training have been brilliant there for the Wexford lads. With the Dublin lads, you know, even Donald Burke started to come back towards the end of the league, but they just can't, they can't totally depend on him. You know, you can't be totally reliant on one player to try and, try and win these games. The fact that it's on in Wexford too, Jackie, it's massive. I think. I think. It, I think the Wexford people like what this group are about, and um, they obviously love. They love what Keith did as, as a as a player for them, and they, they love what he's doing as a manager. I, I I do feel Dara did a really good job with him the last couple of years, and just he just didn't get the results with all the injuries he had. And I think Keith has built on that, and obviously being from the place, Jackie, he knows the culture, and he knows how things run well down there. And you you just can't buy the experience that he has from playing with Wexford and knowing all these guys personally go to club championship. So with all that thing's been said, with them being at home, with the momentum the Wexford team have at the moment, and I just think <clears throat> I just think Dublin are in a, are in a, are in a bad place hurling wise at the moment, Jackie. I think Dublin's demise as hurlers is as a result of their footballer success, and that's that's the way I see it. I don't think Dublin hurling has. When's the last time there's been a good a real buzzy talk about Dublin hurling? It probably has been since mm. Dalo was off. You know, that's really, that's been honest. And lads, that is, that's 12 years ago nearly now. 11, 10, 11, 12 years ago. Like they were winning Leinster's, winning leagues. 
get should be getting to an All-Ireland final. And that's that's just the way it has been. And people will say, you know, a lot of the best hurlers are playing football. That's fair enough, but there's still a lot of good hurlers there. But I just don't know, are the group, are they just good enough at the moment? And it's not on me Hall, don't know who, it's just, I just don't know, are they there, Jackie? And I, I, I think, I, I do feel Wexford are going to win this. But if there's if there's anything in Dublin, like if there's anything in them, and we're all writing them off. And, you know, you'd be playing these things over and over again and sticking them on the wall and do what you want. It has to be this weekend. Because this is the one that they will say, we have to win this, lads, if we want to get out of Leinster. The Galway and Kenny games are going to be tough. You know, you, you nearly take it for granted that they're, that they're going to turn over Antrim and Carlo. So this is the one, like. So whatever's in them is coming out this weekend. And if they don't win it, you know, I, they won't. They won't get out of Leinster. And, and, and I think that Wexford will, Wexford will have that, that third spot in, in their mind. And, you know, they, they, they nearly have the freedom of playing Galway and Kilkenny then. Wexford love playing Kilkenny, by the way, as well, don't they? Like, exactly. You know what I mean? yeah. they, just, they love playing them, whatever it is. It, it just brings the best out of them, whatever it is me- mentally and everything with the fans and the rivalry they have. So this, this, is, this is by far the, the, the biggest game in Leinster uh, this weekend. Whoever wins it, for me, is getting out of Leinster. And I think you can't have much more on the line than that for, for both of these counties. Yeah, a knockout game for them, Maliki, essentially, really, already on day one, which is kind of very hard for both managers to position themselves for. So who's in the better position and who's coming out for you? Jack, I'd, I'd say both managers love the fact that it's a knockout game nearly. Do you? Do you think so? Uh, on day so. one? I think so. I think they've had it. I, like, Certainly around Dublin, Jesus Christ, there's no buzz for the hurlers. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing to convey to them that this matters. You know, like, they, like they have no huge constituency. They're not going to have an awful lot of travelling fans down in uh, in in Wexford uh, on Sunday. Um, like, the one thing that you can always say for Wexford, like at their lowest ebb last year, the county turned out for them in that Kilkenny game. Because it looked like they'd be, they were going to fall to the Joe McDonough. Like they, the county just said, right, you guys have had a terrible, terrible year, but we recognise that you need us and we need you, and we're going to get through this together in a way. And there's just not that, it's just not that bond between the Dublin hurlers and their people. They, people who follow the Dublin hurlers, there's a few lifers, all right, but they, they like they need somebody to follow and. I, I like when Shane was saying not since Dalo's time was there was there any sort of buzz. There was a wee bit of a buzz the year that Pat Gilroy was involved. Um because they followed like like Gilroy is a sort of revered figure in Dublin GAA and was willing to sort of take them over, even though, you know, not a hurling man, but like he had them playing in a certain way. He had them, you know, he he, he had them going bullheaded. He he gave them a personality and an identity. Um Michal Donahue is a great hurling coach, a great hurling man, but he's a quieter sort of individual. He doesn't have that sort of totemic, you know, everybody follow the leader kind of personality uh, around the place. So, yeah, the build up in Dublin is incredibly quiet uh, for ahead of the hurling championship. So I think Michal Donahue will absolutely be delighted that there's something to tell his players, look, this game matters beyond everything. Like it, this is, you do it today or you don't do it. Like, and so I do think that, that that is something for them to hang on to. They have developed a few more players. I think Keanu Sullivan has, has, has grown into, into inter-county in a way that, that they kind of hoped he would. And that's, that's something if they get, if Donald Burke is back and firing, like, it's a great thing not to have to worry about your free taker, you know, that, mm. that, you know, that, right. There's 12, 13 points that, that we know is going to come and that we're not going to be 20 minutes in and the free taker might've missed one on one side and dropped one short or something like that. You know, that that's money in the bank. That's, that's a big thing to have. Like it's the base level. If you're going to compete, uh, you know, at the higher echelons, but it's good. It's way better to have it than to, than to be, wondering uh where where those frees are going to come from um but i think on sunday i think i think there is a home advantage there's plenty of places in the country that there aren't that a home advantage doesn't really count like rory's right about uh about thurlis to, to some extent everybody loves playing there um 
the championship, Wexford Park is a home advantage. There's no doubt about that. And um, I think that probably tips it in their favour um, on on Sunday. The, just the fact that the people will turn out for the for the Wexford hurlers on on the opening day, and they'll get a bump from it if they win, and and Wexford will get a bit of momentum behind them, and blah blah blah, and and mightn't even finish third, you know that kind of way. But yeah. um, it still be uh, Kilkenny. Uh, exactly. well, well, that's what I mean. Like you're like they they've totally turned that 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 fixture around. You know, like they haven't lost. I think they haven't lost it since 2018. So like when you consider what the 20 years before 2018 were in that fixture. Most of the time, like it's an incredible job that they've done uh, in their rivalry with with Kilkenny. So, look, I, I I think home advantage. I think I think Wexford would probably probably come through it, and that would mean that they'll they'll uh, qualify out of Munster. Right. Well, we need or to finish the hurling, but yeah, exactly. Now we're so obsessed with Munster. But Rory, last uh, brief word to you then on Leinster, Dublin or Wexford for that third spot for you? Yeah, I think uh, I'll keep it quick. I think Wexford will win. Home advantage will count. Dublin, I'd like Maliki mentioned the word personality, and uh, and I think that's what something Dublin hurling seems to lack. It doesn't mean they have to be going out telling jokes or be some sort of funny men, but there just seem to be there's lacking in it. there's there's an identity, a personality. A, yeah, you know, like, could you, if the Dublin hurler walked past you, Baron O'Donnell, would you know who they were? Whereas you compared to the Dublin hurlers of the past, or Liam Rushes and Conal Keeney's and these guys, you know, I think it just needs to kind of find itself again. And you'd hope Michal will get a twist out of them. But I don't think it'll happen this Saturday. And I'd fancy Wexford to win and make that third spot, potentially even make a Leinster final. Like give Wexford a shout, actually, to potentially make a Leinster final. Yeah, well, this weekend, so crucial in doing that. We'll have to leave the hurl in there. Shane McGrath, thanks a million for being with us. Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road. And that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the bar.